The Holy One of Joy is coming. How will we prepare the way? We will light this candle and remember God's joy fills the hungry with good things. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, be born in us, we pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. responsive prayer of praise and confession. God of the Christ child, holy is your name. You come in many forms, in the good news to the oppressed, the brokenhearted, the prisoners, and the captives. You come in the times this world is turned around and the humble are lifted up, the starving are satisfied, the weak are made strong. You come in us, in all people who know firsthand the saving power and restoring justice in your word. From generation to generation, you have looked on us with favor, even though we have failed you. You have called us blessed despite our harmful ways. You have kept your word, though we have let you down. Forgive us, Lord. Help us return our focus to you as we wait expectantly. Guide our work for justice in our homes, neighborhoods, and world. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love. Turn toward your God in the confidence that through Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Alleluia, holy is your name, amen. Matthew's Gospel 
opens with a genealogy, starting with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, running through David and all the kings of Judah, down to another Jacob, Joseph's father, which made him Mary's father-in-law. There were women in there too. But what Matthew was counting was 14 generations from Abraham to David, another 14 from David to the exile in Babylon, and 14 more from the exile at the time of Josiah to the coming of the promised one, the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus. That's a lot of years. That's a long time for all those families struggling to find a way to survive, to maintain faith in the God who promised that a king from the house of David would reign forever. Long enough for a couple of empires to rise and fall, the latest being the Romans. Long enough for the elites of the Jewish community to find comfort and security in working alongside the ruling empire. Long enough that there were zealots beginning to rise up, ready to fight anyone and everyone to make the name of God great and lift the Hebrew people out of oppression. It had been long enough that the faithful really meant it when they prayed for God to send a new Moses, a new deliverer, and they had their eyes open and watching. It was into this time of longing, of, of waiting, of anxious hopefulness that the angel Gabriel started making regular commutes to the area called Judea. First, he visited Zechariah, who had mourned for years with Elizabeth their lack of children. Zechariah had loved and served God as a priest all those years. He trusted that God still cared and still had very good intentions for the nation of Israel. Still, it was a shock when Gabriel came to the Holy of Holies where Zechariah was praying to say that not only was Zechariah to have a son, but that John would be a prophet and forerunner to the Messiah. It wasn't long before Gabriel was called into action again. Listen now to the word of God for you this day, starting with Luke 1:26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Now we continue, starting again at verse 39. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of the Lord, my Lord, comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months, and then returned to her home. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Zechariah was surprised to see Gabriel. The truth is, almost no one was allowed into the Holy of Holies, that most sacred part of the temple. So it must have been quite a shock to see an angel standing right there at the altar of incense. Zechariah felt fear, shock, even a little disbelief. Okay, he believed that this interloper was a messenger from God, but the news about a child to come, he needed details. He asked for details. <laughs> but Mary, Mary believed, Mary trusted, right away. Perhaps being barely more than a child, she had faith like a child. Perhaps. Or perhaps it was the faith of the destitute, the faith of one who had no other choice. Maybe it was a mix of the two. But Mary had faith. Faith that waited with expectation trusting the promise of God's love. If God loved Abraham enough to bring him a son, Isaac, when he and Sarah were so very, very old, if God loved the people enough to put Joseph in a position to save them, to call Moses to deliver them, surely God loved them enough still to do something amazing, something unthinkable, or at least unimaginable, Something that sounds more impossible than perplexing. And so when Gabriel explains it, adds one more name to the list of women whose lives were changed because God heard their cries, and then reminds her that nothing is impossible with God. For Mary, the only possible response was, yes, here I am. It was a really big yes. It was a I am all in kind of yes. I serve at the pleasure of the one who reigns, not the Caesar, not Herod, but Yahweh, the Lord. Based on Gabriel's announcement, God was going to need all of Mary's faith and intellect, all of her endurance, and all the joy, patience, and creativity that she could muster to raise this child. There was no promise that it would be easy or even that she would live to see the work of the Messiah who was to come in this child. 
Near the end of his earthly life, Jesus would echo these same words. Knowing that he had been betrayed, facing arrest and death, Jesus offered his own improbable yes to God, saying, not my will, but yours. I am all in. Because that's the promise of love fulfilled. That's how much the God who keeps promises loved the world, loves the world. I wonder sometimes, how long was it before Mary thought, oh, 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 gosh. Was it when Gabriel left? When she saw Joseph again? When she saw her parents? I mean, this is good news, but it's also not great news for Mary or for her community, especially her family. What in the world has she done? It's no wonder that she needed someone to talk to, someone who would get it. And from the moment of her arrival, there was joy at Elizabeth and Zechariah's house. It didn't matter that this visit was unexpected or that her pregnancy was unexpected. Elizabeth saw something in Mary. Perhaps the miracle of her own unexpected pregnancy provided the lens through which Elizabeth could see that Mary was part of a miracle too. In that doorway, as two women embrace, the Spirit had been poured out as promised on young and old. John leaped with joy in Elizabeth's womb. Elizabeth laughed with joy to see Mary, and Mary sang out with a joyful shout. When Mary praises God, crying out that he has shown strength with his arm, has scattered the proud with the thoughts of their hearts, he's brought down the powerful, lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. She's thinking back to the promises that we heard from Isaiah and Joel, from Daniel and the other prophets awaiting an end to exile and the rebuilding to come, the freedom and justice to come, the peace of restoration to come, the joy of freedom from oppression. Mary is imagining the future by remembering the promises already fulfilled. And she's imagining and speaking a future into being based on the promise of this baby to come. Her hope is so strong that those words about her future, the future of the world, she sings them into the prophetic past. Those systems that have been in place, broken systems, they get torn down and rebuilt. Shame and scarcity become dignity and abundance. Despair turn to hope. Conflict becomes peace. This is the lullaby that she would sing to Jesus and to his sisters and brothers to come as she loved them, as she taught them what joy looks like. Surely Jesus knew the song by heart because the stories of Jesus the man are stories about healing and bringing people back into community, about feeding the hungry and offering relief to those who thirst, showing compassion to those who mourn, loving the orphan and the outcast, and teaching his followers to do likewise. All of that is still to come. During this Advent season, in the promise of this baby to come, after the centuries-long season of waiting and the promise of the Prince of Peace to come, we wait. But we can already proclaim this good news with confidence. The promise of love fulfilled is God's love among us, God with us, Emmanuel. The baby in the manger, the rabbi from Nazareth, the troublemaker on the cross, and the one who rose from the dead. The promise of love fulfilled in this age, in this place, in this time, it's still God with us and God through us and God in us. Yes, the promise of love is fulfilled through us because the promise of love fulfilled is us. You and me, the people of God, when we embrace with joy the people God made us to be.
the people God calls us to be each and every day. Remember what Jesus said just before his ascension. As you're going, friends, keep doing and saying and teaching what I've done and taught and said. Make disciples. Bring them into the family. Baptize them. And remember, I am always with you. I will be with you. That's the plan. That's the promise. That is our joy. God with us. Emmanuel. Let our hearts rejoice as we affirm our faith by singing Mary's song of praise one more time.
Would you please join your hearts with mine as we pray this responsive prayer for the community and the world? It's based on Mary's song of praise. Let us pray. O Holy One of Love, your love is inclusive and saves, and that has the power to turn this world around. All that we are sings of you who brings life to birth in us. Our spirits soar when they soar on your wings. You have smiled on us all, and the blaze of that smile no woman or man shall ever forget. O Holy One of Peace, your peace shows mercy on each generation, and that has the power to turn this world around. You, God, are a gentle strength who, when we but turn to you, has caught us up and carried us to greatness. Your love, space cannot hold, nor time, age, and all are moved to response at your touch. O oh, Holy One of Hope, your hope strengthens and raises up the lowly, and that has the power to turn this world around. You, God, are a torrent of justice. You take the straight paths in the minds of the proud and twist them into curvy paths of your ways. The boot of the oppressor you push aside and raise the lowly whom you love from the ground. O oh, Holy One of Joy, your joy fills the hungry with good things, and that has the power to turn this world around. With your own hands, you set a table for the hungry, but the unfeeling rich suffer the cold eye of your judgment. Holy One of mercy, we also weep with those who weep. We call out on behalf of those whose lives are dry and barren, for all who long to be restored. Where there are tears or suffering or illness or grief, May there be songs of joy once again. We lift up these prayers with longing and hope, trusting that you will bring forth a harvest of joy, and that has the power to turn this world around. Our mothers and our fathers, you have held in your arms, and the future grows like a child within a womb, like Jesus within Mary for whom we sing, and you bear us your own son, and that has the power to turn this world around. And now we pray the prayer that your son taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
my friends, the Holy One of joy is coming. How will we prepare the way? We will shine with the hope, peace, love, and joy of Christ everywhere we go, bringing light to everyone we meet so that their hunger might be satisfied, their thirst quenched, and their mourning might turn to dancing. So go, shine, laugh, and sing God's vision into life, one beautiful, joyful day at a time. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.